ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Open Potato. Welcome back to Paraspora. We start today's episode in the aerological scanner view. Because that's right, we are deciding exactly where we want to place our next base. We have this landing site ready. We are ready to rock and roll. Uh, we got a couple of we got a couple of options. Would the colonists resent me for going against their wishes? Don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, I was I was chatting there. Thank you, Amy, the AI. Uh, yes, we have a couple of options. We have a couple of options, and it just occurred to me perhaps we should try and land our our next landing site. Uh, in an area, rather than prioritizing, you know, research outposts, because there are a, a whole bunch of interesting research outposts, perhaps we should see if we could try and look for, um, you know, an area of high iron density, for example. So this is a this is an area of high iron density over here. There's another area, I think, somewhere else. There's an area right over here. I mean, we don't have sector access yet, so we're going to have to definitely sort of consider that. But it's definitely something that we should consider if we want to if we want to place our next lander. Alternatively, we could launch another uh, another another base to this sector sector at the moment, and then we can just launch other bases to other sectors later down the line. Um, that might be interesting. In fact, that might be what we do purely because I don't know how long it's going to take us to actually get the the next sector unlocked. I mean, if I click this here. In fact, do we even have permission at the moment? I'm not even convinced that we have permission at the moment to get to the other sectors. I mean, if you'll recall the last time that we were able to get access to this sector, uh, we needed to get permission from, from Houston. So I guess maybe we just plonk the, the landing site over here. Alright, well, long story short, we're gonna we're gonna try and plonk it we're gonna try and plonk it reasonably close to this field of uh, I think it's it's water over there. Okay, so that's not necessarily Fantastic for us, but not necessarily the end of the world. Okay, let's freaking go. Let's see what the heck happens here. I'm very curious. So is it gonna land? Is it gonna land? Is it gonna land right now? What's the time frame for uh, for doing this? That is an excellent question. I guess... I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out at some point. Oh, hold up. It just happens. It just happens instantly. Well, there we go. Uh, anyway, folks, uh, I should uh, I should address right now. Thank you very much to everyone who. Uh, uh, what is that? This is aluminium over here. Where's Where's the iron? I saw iron around here. Was I going blind? Aluminium, silicon. Okay, there's no iron, but there is everything else. Thank you to everyone who left a comment uh, on the last video. Uh, a lot of a lot of interesting a lot of interesting comments with regards. There is iron over there. Uh, a lot of interesting comments with regards to. Uh, to spreading out batteries and making sure that we've got a, you know, a properly, a properly working system. Uh, throw that in there and let's just get, uh, let's get a little, a little solar farm. Uh, actually, I think that we might be fine for, yeah, I think that we might actually be fine for that. And we've got one worker here which works, uh, which works to build this. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty unique sort of self-sustaining independent base. Yes, so the the density of our batteries, the density of our batteries at the moment is is too darned high. Uh, we clearly need to fix this because if a meteor decides to fall right on top of the batteries, then we are going to be in uh, what's the what's the technical term? Hella trouble, I think is is probably uh, is probably the correct term. Um, but you know, we'll 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 address that. They do tend to happen occasionally, but. I think I think we will move towards uh, a more dispersed battery network. Right, so we have a couple of research outposts. I'm pretty keen to try and get a couple of these colonists moved across. I mean, we've got a lot of colony capability. And that's why we've got two spaceports that are currently working on shuttling colonists to Earth. Uranium. Also, we should see if we can try and mine some uranium. Even if we don't necessarily want to actually use uranium, we should still try... Um, we should still try and uh, and do it. What do we? What do we? What do we need here? What's the? What's the issue? Aluminium. Uh, okay, ditch the silicon mine then. I guess it's not a priority. Prioritize the aluminium mine. There we go. And then I guess prioritize. I mean, we want to link these two networks together anyway at some point, don't we? Like that is definitely going to happen. All right, I guess we ditch the worker hub as well. Okay, get us an aluminium mine up and running as swiftly as we possibly can, please. 
Do we not have any aluminium? Do we have... We, we straight up do not have enough aluminium to even build an aluminium mine? Really? Uh... That's very surprising. Add resource. Aluminium. So we're able to keep minimums and maximums. I mean, that's not super helpful, to be honest. So what is the point? What is the point of getting a second a second base if we if we can't even get if we can't even get the the basics up and running? Right. I mean, this isn't gonna make any difference at all because we still need we still need all of our uh, all of our aluminium where the heck did it all go all right well that's a fundamentally useless uh structure i guess we're gonna have to we're gonna have to make sure that we work our hub crawl across to the extra base so that it's not completely useless now i tell you what range of worker hubs i don't know if that's actually a possibility but would be really excellent if we could do that okay so let's get that done thankfully we we have a ridiculously large amount of uh of resource that is actually just chilling out everywhere we do need to make sure that our maintenance network is expanded a little bit as i've already said batteries let's get the batteries sorted disperse them a little bit throw a couple down there throw a couple over there Cool. Wonderful. Okay, so that's like five additional batteries. Pretty happy with that. Uh, should make a, a little bit of difference. We'll get some solar farms moved across here as well. Uh, none of it is going to be maintained, at least for the, the short term anyway. Cool. And then that's going to allow us to supply this second base with all of the resources that we clearly need to. I don't know what happened there. Is it because I didn't have the landing site number two, like, properly configured to actually store stuff? I think that that might have been the case. Like, it arrived with more aluminium, and then it just disappeared into nothingness? There must be enough aluminium to actually start an aluminium mine. I refuse to believe that that's, that that's not something that would, that would happen. That's super weird, but ah, whatever. It, it is what it is. Uh, we need to make sure that we have like a proper express highway up and running as well. That's uh, that's definitely something that we want to do. Uh, colonist migrations. How many colonists are we actually migrating here? I, I don't actually know. We've got two. We've got two that are currently ongoing just at the start of the journey. We can start launching additional space mirror arrays, additional landing sites, polar nukes. Polar nukes, polar nukes, everyone was saying in the comments, uh, is a pretty bad idea if you want the colonists to have a, a good time on, on Mars, which, you know, it's something that we need to think about, really. I mean, we, we were charged with, uh, with actually giving uh, a hoot about the colonists. Let's throw down... I don't know. We'll throw down another space array, space mirror array. Sure, we'll do that. That sounds... That sounds like a good idea. Uh, so yeah, we probably do not want to nuke the to nuke the planet. But you know, in saying that, maybe just maybe we want to we want to we want to change it up a little bit and actually and actually do something with uranium like fission plants or something. You know, factory upgrades, excellent. Now we know exactly what we're gonna hit next, and that is the space port limit plus six. Yeah, that's that's absolutely something that we're after. Uh, can I maybe get more spaceports? At the moment. I totally can. Okay, so I still haven't hit my existing spaceport uh, limit. So let's get spaceports. And again, let's try and disperse these to an extent. Right in there. Yep. Okay, uh, that's a, already a high concentration of spaceports over there. I mean, spaceports really are... They really are MVP. They're fantastic. Uh, speaking of MVP, we've got a lot of iron. We've got a lot of iron at the moment, but we do not have enough carbon. So I think getting getting on top of our carbon situation, perhaps throwing down a couple of additional steel uh, facilities would be kind of great. These are level 2 factories. We're going to want to roll these out. Um, not necessarily soon, but we're going to want to see if we can try and get upgrades to like steel factories and stuff. Because that is, as I identified, uh, kind of important. So let's throw that down. 
let's throw that down. There was also really interesting chat in the comments about the about the utility uh, of uh, of maintenance plants. I mean, they are quite expensive. We do need to input electronics and polymers, neither of which are particularly basic resources. Um, but on the whole, I think I I don't really necessarily mind using them. We've got plenty of pretty much everything at the moment. the The trouble is, is that I really cannot spend the resources that I that I have fast enough. I do actually worry a little bit that perhaps maybe I'm just playing a little bit slow and I just need to I just need to see if we can you know throw down as much stuff as we possibly can so that we utilize many 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 more of our resources uh, than we currently than we currently are doing. I do worry about this. Okay, throw down some maintenance facilities. Over there, excellent. That's cool. All right, wonderful. Okay, so that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff that we're working on at the same time. Carbon now looks like it's heading upwards. Uh, aluminium, we've just added two aluminium deposits over there, which is kind of nice. Not to mention spaceports. We're in a good place with regards to spaceports. Actually, crazily enough, electronics is the thing that we need most. Uh, let's hit these two electronic factories with uh, with an upgrade. Silicon mine is turned off because it is completely out. It is completely out of all of the things that uh, that a silicon mine is for, and that is for mining silicon. There we go. Let's remove all of that. We are upgrading the electronics factories, which is kind of excellent. Uh, we also potentially need to worry about silicon because our we do have silicon mines up here. Ah, uh, maybe we don't need to worry about that. These are two level two silicon mines, which I guess is kind of fine. Uh, Perseverance Rover Research Outpost. Wonderful. Today we found the Perseverance Robot. This little robot had a drill to collect core samples, search for signs of microbial life. Yada, yada, yada. One could say if it was an old colleague of mine and part of the geochemical team, my job is to measure the physical and chemical properties of Mark and soil. Uh, found any life on Mars. Guess this planet knows how to keep it secret. Okay, fine. Not in... Te you know, not terribly interesting, but but hey ho. Uh, also, speaking of terribly interesting, we should throw down for sure an areological scanner. Excuse me. Floodable area. I don't think that I'm necessarily bothered about the floodable areas at the moment. Although I suppose once the polar ice caps actually do melt, uh, flooding areas is going to be is going to be somewhat important. Uh, but you know, for now, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, either way, electronics is on the up and up, which is kind of great. Current demand is very, very low. Current production is also kind of lower than I would like. Well, we're able to we're able to build stuff like areological scanners pretty darn quickly, to be honest. So that's kind of great. That's kind of, kind of, kind of great. Uh, Beagle Two Lander. We can also throw down. Oh no, we can't because this is just on the boundary. I remember. I remember this. Uh, Beagle Two. Can't do, can't do anything with. Okay, we have a couple of colonists chilling out at the research outposts. I don't know why they prefer colonies, like proper full colonies, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to anything else. But I guess that is what it is. Uh, right, we should probably work on some additional colonist migrations. So I'm going to add literally all of these spaceports that I have available at the moment to colonist uh, movement. So that's what two, four, six. Six of our seven spaceports are now concerned with with colonist movement, right? And I think that it is... I think that it is... Oh, no, it's all six. Literally all six. Okay, ignore me. Apparently, I can't count. E each and every one of our uh, spaceports is concerned with uh, with moving colonists, which is kind of great. Okay, and we're going to get uh, we're gonna get more spaceports a in a bit anyway. Of these space technologies. Yes, me too. Oh, that was it? That was a very... Very small reflection. Oh, hold up. We do actually legitimately have a uh, spaceport number six, because of course, starts with zero, doesn't it? Of course, counting, counting in, uh, counting in computer starts at zero. I, I, I need to forget that. Okay, so we, or I need to remember that. We do, we do in fact have uh, another spaceport which we can, which we can bring online to do stuff like additional landing, and, uh, and everything like that. Okay, so this is this is fine. It's it's just taken a long time because there's a lot of resources that need to be moved across there because of the stupid landing site nonsense that we had to deal with. But 
whatever. I guess it's probably not that worthwhile, really, when you consider it in hindsight. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, oh, we got an impact zone up here. I guess this is going to be interesting. It doesn't even damage it that much, to be honest. Yeah, efficiency drops off. Structural integrity is immediately repaired by, uh, by the maintenance drones. I guess, then, if our batteries were hit here, we'd probably still be fine. Yeah, that's completely cool. Okay, we need to probably shut down a couple of these uh, extractors that have ceased to be useful. A lot of iron mines and carbon mines need to be brought offline, irritatingly, which means that we are constantly, constantly, constantly hunting to expand. Uh, we need to constantly find sources of iron, sources of carbon. It's very important that we have a continual supply of iron and carbon for steel. I uh, read about the golden age of superhero astronauts when I was talking, I was t when I was taking the tanning program, but I can't even begin to imagine what Virginia Grissom and Edsel White must have felt when they set foot on the planet for the first time. I look forward to achieving a dream like that. Who knows? Maybe in the future. Okay, so we completed another, another bit of research. That's cool. That's fine. Don't know where it was, don't know where it happened, but that's okay. I'm hoping that this area will be will be good for resources. So far, we found Diddly Squat. Excellent. Okay, speaking about good for resources, we need to get a couple of additional areological scanners down here. There we go. Okay, two additional areological scanners. That should make uh, a big old difference. Yep, that's, uh, that's very, very good. How's our traffic overlay looking? Our traffic overlay looking uh, is looking is looking okay. It's looking fine. Terex lander research output uh, measure the oxygen isotope ratios of various molecules in the atmosphere. Okay, so not all of the not all of the research locations are anywhere near as interesting as the uh, as the Chinese nuclear program, which is so far the most interesting uh, the most interesting research project that we've really completed. Uh, anyway, iron, carbon, iron, carbon, both of those are very, very important resources. We still need to continue to push the, to push the boat out a little bit. Areological scanner, I'm actually going to queue up another areological scanner over here too. Not like it's really going to make much of a difference. Ah, uh, we can deliver a little bit of steel to it, I guess, in the, in the meantime. Sure, what the heck. What the heck, eh? New colonists have arrived. Um, yeah, we haven't had a lot of new colonists arrive in a long time. 400 are pending departure? Presumably that's departure from Earth. Limit is 250. Limit is 250. Why is the limit 250? Why is the limit 250? Have we... We don't have a shortage of food. We don't have a shortage of water. We probably do need to get a little bit more food. There might be... There might be some issues. There might be some issues around here. Uh, with, uh, with food, really. And that food issue may very well be related to the fact that we just don't have enough water coming in. Uh, we can always, we can always fix that. We can always fix that with relative ease. Throw that, uh, water extractor down there. See if we can find any additional sources of water anywhere. There's another source of water down here. How unbelievably convenient. Okay. Again, I feel that I'm still not playing fast enough. I know that I'm playing in 16 times speed, and I'm, I'm frankly spending stuff as fast as my brain can can cope. But still, I am not convinced that that is, that that is fast enough. Yeah, we really have so much stuff. Colonists have arrived. New colonists have arrived at the planet. But still, we're we're only hitting effective capacity. Effective capacity is 250. Why is the effective capacity only 250? Like, let's build a let's build a new colony, I guess. See if that makes any difference. I, I don't know why. I don't know why our our colony seems to only be capable of, of dealing with a couple of people. Let's get that upgraded. Let's get that upgraded as well. Let's get that built. Effective capacity is still 250. Is this... I think that this must be a food thing, right? It must be a food thing. It must be... It must be that my food situation is just that poor. Okay, our water is in a really, really, really bad state as well. Uh, which I know that I'm trying to fix. 
but clearly I can't fix fast enough. There we go. Okay, let's get another food factory online, see if that makes a hint of a difference. Areological scanner is working overtime now to explore this area. That's cool. Areological scanner is now online over here as well. There's water over here. There's water over here. We just need to get there. We just need to freaking get there. Okay, priority, priority, priority. Let's also throw down some maintenance facilities as well. Not like we really have much of a choice. Okay, three additional maintenance facilities to, to cover this. That's pretty good, uh, I think. I'm going to be able to build a research outpost here without it interfering with the solar farm. Apparently, I totally am. Throw down two research outposts over there. Excellent. So strange. So strange. Effective capacity, 250. I feel like it's got to be it's got to be a, a comment about the the capability of uh, of me to find water or to supply water I would say. Also still consistently running out of power. Okay, this is kind of ridiculous. Let's um let's see if we can try and switch up our our research to maybe get fission plants. Yeah, uranium mine and a fission plant. I am like 100% on on these bits of tech. This is ridiculous. We cannot have we cannot have this this happening. It's intensely problematic, I would say. Yeah, to continually have this power run out. It's just so bad. It's just so bad. I mean, solar power is the vast majority of our power supply at the moment. And when wind power goes, it just disappears. It just absolutely freaking disappears. Okay, so let's do... Let's do some additional solar farms. I know that it's not perhaps ideal, but let's just chain a couple around here. There we go. Okay, I think that that should all connect together. If it doesn't, we'll throw down a few additional worker hubs. Also serves to just link the different areas of the of the base together. It's very important. But I mean that should be that should be enough, right? Like that should be enough to to get things back together. I hope. I hope anyway. Any further sources of water that we can leverage? Food we're in a little bit of a better place for now. Power is still very very low. Workers, we still got plenty of workers being built, etc. That's pretty great. We got some colonists migrating over to what looks like new research facilities, which is pretty nice. They've arrived before the building was actually finished. A little bit funky, but I guess that's fine. I guess that is fine. Uh, the worker hub is about to fall into a state of complete disrepair. Where's the nearest maintenance? Uh, the nearest maintenance hub. I have placed them. Maintenance hub. Yeah, that needs to be considered a priority, please. Let's get that done. Let's get that done. Aluminium is the is the resource that is uh, this is in short supply. Plenty of polymers, plenty of polymers. It's just aluminium that is that is the problem. Here we go. Come on, let's get this done, please. And then power. I guess power has degraded to the point where it's problematic. Uh, we got loads of storage at this workers' hub. Why don't we see if we can try and actually throw down a storage center over here? Throw down a storage center over there. Uh, solar farm over there as well. That's cool. So that might make a little bit of a difference. Uh, but if we get this maintenance facility up and running, then that should hopefully arrest our problems. Uh, okay. Also, something else that I didn't consider. Is our... Is our colony limits... Is our colony limits determined by... It totally is. It's totally freaking determined. It's totally freaking determined by the by the tech. So I can have all of the houses that I want in the world, but apparently people are not going to move here unless I uh, unless I straight up just get the biotech uh, research, which I, I don't know. It's kind of ridiculous, to be honest, don't you think? But, uh, but hey-ho. 
All right, so this is being used as like a pseudo storage zone, this worker hub here, which is kind of interesting. So all of these, all of these, uh, all of these migrations are a crucial part of the terraforming Complete waste plan. of time. It is wise to get started on this research. Thank you. I appreciate that, Amy. I mean, that's, uh, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit offended, to be honest, that you think that I'm not paying close attention to the, uh, to the mission parameters, so to speak, if you want me to speak in techno babble. Biotech researched. Excellent. Okay. Now we've got all of the colonists that we could probably want. Okay. Plus 4,000. Yeah. Give me that one as well. Okay. I hate researching biotech. It, it just goes so, it just goes so counter to, uh, so contrary to what I actually think is is cool you know i mean biotech i, I guess it's kind of cool right but like at the end of the day at the end of the day it's no space research it's no engineering research also we should now be able to actually make this properly just work is there any way that we can research like a bigger a bigger energy conduit sort of thing like, uh, I know that we've got fast roads here. Hyperloop? Yeah. This is this is kind of what we're after. I mean, look, but at, at the end of the day, right, we are, we are gated by the fact that we have, like, zero colonists. Or functionally zero colonists, right? We've got an effective capacity now of 1,000. Uh, the new arrivals, or the, the total population has jumped to 450. People are no longer leaving, which is pretty excellent, uh, I'll say. So that's going to that's gonna really speed things up. It's gonna really speed things up, but at the same time, you know, we need to we need to care for these people. We need to care for these people as much as I would rather rather not. We do actually have to to care for them. Uh, iron mine, yep. What's going down there? Maintenance facility. Cool. Areological scanner. Uh, silicon mine. Carbon mine. Sure. Level two biotechnology achieved. Still a yeah. way to go. Exciting, isn't it? Very, very exciting. At least I flippin' figured out how to actually make it work. So that's pretty good. Uh, you know, I think you're right. Let's see if we can try and get a couple of let's see if we can try and get a couple of space mirror arrays up and running, right? I mean we got three out of fifteen launches done. Let's let's go let's go and see if we can try and get a few more. See if we can try and get a few more. Okay, this this area has got to be pretty busy, right? It's not that busy. It's not that busy. It's not actually that busy. Active scanners. We've scanned 2.3% of the entire Martian surface. Excellent. We did uh, we did some more research. Wonderful. I mean, I feel like we're flying now. Look at that. A hundred and something research points. That's bonkers. Second level of biotech. Wonderful. Let's get fission. Let's get fission. Let's get fission right now so that I don't have to rely on renewable resources. I mean, well, technically, uranium is a renewable resource. Not in the sense that, you know, solar power or wind power is. But you get the picture. You get the picture. I still have to... I still have to mine it. Okay. A couple of aluminium mines there just to speed this this thing along. Ooh, good stuff. That's a water a water deposit over there. So that's good. I'll do that. Also throw down an additional food factory. I'll do it on a non-flooded area for good measure. What the heck? Uh, did I get the ability to get additional spaceports? I don't have that ability yet. I was halfway through I was halfway through space space tech before that happened. Okay, look at that. My population has boomed. We've now got 5,000, uh, a limit of 5,000, an effective capacity of 2,200. Uh, so that's, so that's really, really good. Yeah, and the effective capacity is actually limited by me. Nuclear fission will be a great power source for the Mars base. And since I will be controlling it, there will be no human error. I will need to source uranium on the planet. Yes, of course. Okay. So we have uh, a whole bunch of pretty basic colonies, but maybe we want to we want to increase those to not be super basic colonies. We could we could try perhaps getting some uh, some advanced things. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, carbon is still a sore spot. Carbon is still a freaking sore spot, and that's and that's pretty irritating. 
Again, look, we've run out of power. The batteries, we just need more batteries. We need more batteries. We just need more power supply. Wind power is terrible. Wind power is terrible. Solar power is the way forward as far as I'm concerned. Like, there is no... There is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. The middle ground is is actually mining a little bit of uranium and uh, and getting on top of this power problem. Aluminium mine... What's up? Oh, it's not operable because there's no power in that vicinity? Is that the case? Yeah, well, I ain't building... I ain't building any more... I ain't building any more... Uh, any more wind power, that's for sure. Excuse me? There we go. That should be fine. Excellent. Okay, loads of chemicals. Chemicals coming out the wazoo, but I don't actually need chemicals for literally anything. I just need... I just need carbon. I need water. I need... I need the basics, really. I need the basics to life. Okay, capacity is good. New arrivals, 800 and something. Pending departures, zero. Interesting. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's... Let's see. As soon as these missions are done, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish I'm gonna finish our I'm gonna finish our uh, I'm gonna finish our program once these four are done, and we're instead we're gonna pour resources into the solar array up at the top. I think that that's probably our best our best chance of success at the moment. Okay, food is still fine. Food is still good. One thousand seven hundred population. I mean, we are flying through the research points at the moment. Base research points sixty five. It's not exactly not exactly ideal. I think we were hitting we were hitting seven percent. A hundred seven percent. What am I talking about? Uh, we were hitting one hundred and twenty points per month, which was pretty good. But uh, but clearly, a couple of research facilities have actually decayed. Okay. Any other... Let's queue those up. Just so that I have... Like, an idea of exactly where... Where they are. There's no disadvantage to doing this, right? Don't think that there's any additional... Yeah, that's on the boundary again. Okay, so we probably want to... You know, we probably want to have a, a dual sort of approach here. There we go. This does seem ridiculous that, you know, I'm in control of a planet and I still cannot figure out the best way to get around except building these stinky little worker hubs. I'm also gonna do something which is shockingly, shockingly forward thinking. I'm gonna connect up two alternative routes and I'm gonna see if that makes any difference to, uh, to the sort of amount of protection that we have in the area. Okay. Mer Opportunity Research Outpost. Wonderful. I, I just don't care about these research things anymore. Like, they really just don't make a difference to me. Instead, just any day of the week, I will take... I will take... Uh, I'm going to readjust that so that it falls within the, uh, within the boundary of the maintenance facility. There we go. I think that might work a little bit better. It does indeed. Excellent. Okay. So, we wait for this to we wait for this to get done. This should just sort of happen in the background really. Not super bothered about that at all. Uh I would like to upgrade. So I would like to upgrade ways. That's right. Upgrade ways all the way back to all the way back to there. Did that work? I think that worked. So, that means that we're going to throw all of these resources all of these bits of carbon, all of these steel, uh, bits of steel, into upgrading the route between the sort of two points over here. It's pretty important that we have, you know, a facility, uh, a facility to connect. It's pretty important that we have a facility to connect the, the sort of key areas of our base. There we go. There we go, and there we go. Okay, so yeah, when when this happens, it's gonna be it's gonna be marvelous. It's gonna be really really good. Also, speaking of, we should assign, I mean, many many more. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a real test. That's gonna be a real test for us if we're gonna be able to if we're gonna be able to pull off all of this 
all of this part collection, I suppose, for the solar array. Any other buildings need to be shut down? Yes. Yes. Chemical plant. Yes. Oh my goodness, there's so many. There's so many buildings that have actually just stopped being useful. Oh boy, look at this. This is why we need to constantly expand, folks, because otherwise we're gonna we're gonna run out. No power over here. Uh I mean that's a problem. It's just out with the boundary. But that's fine. Uh anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Chemical plant. Yep. Bring that offline. Chemical plant. We're in the process of scrapping that one. In the process of scrapping that one. Fission plant! Good old fission power out of nuclear materials. I mean, that is what I am very, very, very interested in. A uh, hundred thousand percent. Aerobrake, methane, asteroid, comet crashing. Uh, I feel like that's not super relevant, actually. Space elevator, nice. A carbon nanotube tether. Carries a climber to aereo stationary orbit. I don't think I care about that. Faster roads. Faster roads and the hyperloop. Yes, pretty pretty pogged about that. So let's see if we can let's see if we can try and get that ASAP. But we're fine for everything. We're fine for everything at the moment. Uh, so do I have the ability to discover aluminium? Is that aluminium right there actually? No, that's silicon. Looks very very similar. Is that aluminium? What's the difference between aluminium and silicon? That's silicon over there. Do we have to discover new aluminium? That's definitely aluminium. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. Not aluminium, uranium, potato, uranium, freaking uranium. Uh, right, well this changes, this changes the equation a little bit, because it means that we need to prioritize getting a fission plant right in there. Let's get a couple of worker hubs, just to make sure that we have got proper, uh, proper reach in this area. Uranium mine, excellent, and I think we're also going to need a bespoke... Uh, in fact, no, we don't even need a bespoke maintenance facility because we're already, we're already ready to go. Okay, we've almost maxed out. We've almost maxed out our, uh, the number of humans that we can have on this planet. It's taken a while, but, you know, we're getting there, which is kind of nice. Boy, oh boy, I just wish that I could do something to speed up the, the transfer of resources from, like, you know, the main area to, uh, the, the little area out at the side here. We're fine for iron, we're fine for carbon, we're actually okay for water at the moment. I just wish there was a, a little bit more, so to speak. Iron mine over here, it's doing doing good stuff. There is a lot of stuff that is happening, don't get me wrong. A lot of stuff that is happening. New building was unlocked. Yeah, I know, we're working on it, we're working on it. Uh, this fission plant is actually shockingly... Shockingly close to being done. We just need to get the uranium from the uranium mine up and running first and that needs to be powered But of course it can't actually be powered uh, Because I was planning to power it with the fission plant, but as it turns out you need uranium to actually build the The fission plant. I don't know how that works That's a little bit of a lingering question in my mind Not entirely sure that's how fission works, but okay, or at least the fission construction. Uh, let's get a solar farm over here as well. There we go. Sure, what the heck. Alright, either way, we are we are done here. Let's get the uranium. Uranium. Bada bim, bada boom. Oh boy, it takes ages. It takes ages. Extracts and refines uranium ore. That takes, that takes a while. That takes a fairly significant period of time. But, at the end of the day, it doesn't particularly matter. Anyway, ladies and gents, we're going to wrap this episode up right about now. Thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you ever so much for the support over on the Patreon page. Patreon.com forward slash Obita Potato. This has been Perestra. I've been Obita Potato. Thanks to Banana Nana C Senpai and Aurelio for being the $325 uh, tier patrons. I'll see you next time. Bye.